but he's going to be talking about baptism tonight and diving into why we baptize in Jesus' name as our one big truth. So, Dad, take it away. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Let's talk about why we baptize in Jesus' name. Uh, one of our distinctives is that we preach faith in Jesus Christ, repentance from sin, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit as God's plan of salvation for the New Testament church. Of course, that's based directly on Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, which is the first sermon of the New Testament church, and it directly answers the question of how to be saved. It's the answer of the Apostle Peter, supported by all the other apostles. So it's very significant. And in that passage, we find the emphasis on baptism in Jesus' name. Now, why do we think it's so important to actually call on the name of Jesus? Let me give you several answers. The first answer is because that's what the early church did. That's what we find in the New Testament. That is the example of the 12 apostles and the first century church. So we want to do what they do. It's interesting, if you study the doctrine of baptism, all the actual accounts of being baptized are in the book of Acts, which is no surprise because that's the history book of the early church. There are nine places where the fact of water baptism is mentioned as having taken place, but there are actually five that give you the details how the person was baptized. And it's significant in all five examples, that is 100% of the examples in the New Testament, it is specifically stated that the people were baptized with the invocation of the name of Jesus Christ. So that's the basic answer. We're Bible-believing people. Our doctrine is based on the Bible. And we follow the teaching of the apostles of Jesus Christ, whom Jesus appointed to set up the church. And so we follow the example of the Bible. Let me briefly show you what I'm talking about. In Acts chapter 2, the Apostle Peter and the Jews preached to the first crowd of the New Testament church. They were all Jewish people, and Peter said they would be baptized. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Acts 2.38. Then in Acts chapter 8, we find Philip the evangelist going to Samaria. The Samaritans were people who had descended from marriages between Jews and Gentiles. So they, you might consider them part Jew, part Gentile. And the Bible specifically says in Acts 8.16 that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then in Acts 10, the Apostle Peter preaches to the Gentiles, that is non-Jewish people, for the first time, to the household of Cornelius. This is a very significant event because it expands the church to the whole world. And in Acts chapter 10 and verse 48, Peter commanded these new believers to be baptized in the name of the Lord. That is, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then we come to Acts 19, where the Apostle Paul uh, was preaching to uh, 12 disciples of John the Baptist. They had already been baptized uh, unto John's baptism, but they had not heard about Jesus. So when Paul found out that they had never been baptized in Jesus' name, he rebaptized and he baptized them a second time. What was the difference? Because he specifically wanted them to express their faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and he specifically wanted them to call or to have the name of Jesus called over them when they were baptized. So in Acts 19.5, they were rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that sets an example even for today. If someone has been baptized a different way, they should still be baptized in the name of Jesus to represent their faith in Him and who He really is, God manifested in flesh, the Son of God. And then finally, Acts 22, 16, the Apostle Paul is telling the story of his own conversion, and he said God sent him to a man named Ananias, and Ananias said, Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Uh, calling on His name. Well, who is the Lord? Actually, uh, in Paul's own conversion a few days earlier, he had, he had asked this question as God struck him with a light from heaven, and he was shocked and surprised. He said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, the very one you are persecuting. So in this instance, Acts 22, notice it specifically says calling or invoking. So when we talk about being baptized in Jesus' name, we're not just talking about generically, we'll have a Christian baptism. But we're specifically saying, 
have the name of Jesus called over you at your baptism? So my first answer to the question is simply that we baptize the name of Jesus Christ because that's the uh, uniform or consistent example of the New Testament church. Whether you're Jewish or partially Jewish or non-Jewish, that covers the whole world. Everybody has commanded to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, even if you've been baptized before, and specifically have his name called over you. But now let me give you a second answer as well. When you think about and study the reasons for water baptism in the Bible, every reason for being baptized is also a sp specifically a reason why you should be baptized in Jesus' name. So in other words, if you go throughout the New Testament and say, well, why, why should people be baptized? Well, here's some answers, and for the sake of time, I won't give you all the scriptures, but we're baptized to confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We're baptized for the remission of sins, or another passage says the washing away of sins. We're baptized as part of our new birth experience, baptized as part of our salvation experience. We're baptized to be placed into Christ, to be identified with Christ. We're buried with Christ in water baptism. So think of all the reasons I just gave you. Every one of them is a reason to use the name of Jesus. So if baptism is part of our salvation, what's the only name given for our salvation? According to Acts 4.12, it's the name of Jesus Christ. Baptism is for the remission of sins. What is the name that's given to us for the remission or washing away our, of our sins? According to Acts 10.43, it's the name of Jesus. Baptism is a personal identification with Jesus Christ. Romans 6.3, we're baptized into Christ. Baptism is a burial with Jesus Christ. God is a spirit, couldn't die. God is our heavenly Father, didn't go into the tomb. But Jesus Christ, the true man who was God in the flesh. As a man, he died and he was buried. So we're specifically being identified with Jesus Christ and we're being buried with Jesus Christ. So notice all of these purposes mean we need to use the name of Jesus. So if, if we don't use the name of Jesus, it's like we don't really even understand why we're being baptized because it's for the wash away of sins, remission of sins, forgiveness of sins, uh, entrance into Christ, being part of the body of Christ, confessing Christ. All those are reasons why we need the name of Jesus because the name of Jesus is what's given for our salvation. In other words, Buddha isn't our savior, Muhammad isn't our savior, the preacher isn't our savior, the water isn't our savior. So when we get baptized, we're asking God to take away our sins. Why? Because Jesus Christ died for us, because he was buried, because he rose again. So it's a specifically asking God to wash away our sins in the name of Jesus. Now one final point. You might say, well, why would anybody even think of any other way? It seems like slam dunk. It seems obvious, and it really is. But there's one verse of scripture that people use in Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus told his disciples to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit. So some people say, well, we should just quote the words of Jesus. And I've even had some people say, well, you know, Peter preached in Acts chapter 2 to baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'd rather take the words of, of Jesus than the words of Peter. Well, actually, that's a misunderstanding because that's implying the Bible is contradicting itself. And actually, Jesus didn't write any part of the New Testament. The Gospel of Matthew was written by Matthew. Matthew was with Peter as part of the 12 apostles when Jesus gave the command. Then Matthew was with Peter and stood with him when Peter preached his message. If Peter got it wrong, Matthew should have tugged on his robe and said, hey, Peter, did you forget what Jesus just said? But actually, they understood what Jesus said. If you look at the parallel passages, the Gospel of Mark chapter 16 verse 17 talks about Jesus said you'll preach and do works in my name. Luke 24 47, Luke says that they would preach and provide repentance and remission of sins in his name. So when you look at all three Gospel accounts, they're all talking about the same name. And notice it's one name singular, not three names. We don't believe they're three different persons with three different names, but we believe there's one God. And according to Colossians 2.9, in Jesus Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is the visible revelation of the invisible Father, according to uh, John 14. Jesus is the Son of God. 
The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. So when we put this all together, what is the one name that reveals Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? It's the name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus was actually describing his own name. That's what the apostles understood, and that's why throughout the New Testament we consistently find they always baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. We should do the same.